So let's take some questions because uh, I've been holding on to this one for a little bit uh, from MG. He was talking about question. If Mills is as good as what we keep hearing, how will that work out? Power play quarterback has to be Fox. Was Nils enough? Will Nils get enough time? 23 points in the power play. Good that you have that stat in there. Uh, this is the other reason why I need to fill this in. It didn't work having two guys that were puck handlers when it was Leach and Zubov together. Not for long. They only had two really good, uh, uh, really solid years together. Uh, 94 when they had the number one power play unit and 95 when they had the fifth best power play unit. Um, the real answer on that also is that was back when you used to have two defensemen on the power play as a norm. Now it's the one, three, one. So, um, and the one, three, one appears to be here to stay. So I don't think they'd be on the same power play unit. I would think it would be Nils on the second and Fox on the first because Panarin's on, on the left, on the left side, John, not only that, but you don't want to do what David Quinn did this season and overload one unit with righties and then overload the other one with lefties. Um, Nils Lundqvist is a right, and he's got a great shot. He's got a better shot than Adam Fox, and it's not even close. And I like Adam Fox. I like the, his ability to get the shot through to the net, and he's really good at getting that, like, effective kind of my, the puck has its own eyes type shot through. But Nils Lundqvist has an absolute bomb. He's got a cannon. And that could be a difference maker on the power play. So um, I would really love to see how that dynamic works. Um, uh, as for the comment about Leach and Zubov not working well together. Uh, no. Oh, for long, he said. For, oh, okay, for long. Sorry, Sorry my, uh, my fault. I, I misread that then. But, yeah, I mean, the only reason why that didn't work out for long was because uh, Neil Smith made a dumb, dumb trade and tried to keep 1994 alive instead of developing the players, which was also partially influenced by Marc Messier's disdain of Sergei Zubov not being tough enough after that Flyers series. So they made a panic move and basically McElrath themselves out of Sergei Zubov. And, yeah, here's the... Kyle and here's... This is one reason why we keep talking about um watch 27 right here yeah just watch it and you'll you'll see it and bang oh. back of the net we do we, we covered this on another one and we have anthony back with us again um that this is is not nhl goaltenders but the shots are definitely nhl quality yeah oh my god yeah they, they like you can say bang back of the net yep. um that was actually off i think uh oh no that still was that was that was his goal there's uh, one of them. We're just going to play this really quick and then move on. This is the reason why we keep talking about Nils Lundqvist. Um, okay, here's this one. This one's going to be a wrist shot. He's just going to step up and just fire it right by him. And Incredible shooter. Uh, incredible shot. There, I want to find the one that uh, really uh, made me completely shake with, with anticipation. Like This one's a good one. This is a wrist shot. Like he's picking corners from like the blue line and stuff. And all right, there's this one where it's here's his one timer. Oh no, this yeah, I think it is his one timer again. And bang, because again, where he's stationed right there is where Panarin usually would be. The one three one is what the hard part is, because if if they went back to a classic setup, it's still something else. So. I just wanted to show you some of these highlights. This is the reason why. Uh, that's the one. Oh my goodness! He gets that's that. the one that just like, he's. He looks like Stamkos there doing that, right? And you're like, oh my goodness! So I'm just gonna pull that back and um, uh, not share that one anymore. Um, John Bobbio is asking this, and I think you said fifty fifty when you did the Chris Drury thing. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're going to stick with on the Rangers land, Jack Eichel? Uh, I think, honestly, if, if, you, if you're asking for me, not just messing around as Chris Drury, I, I, I want to say it's about 60-40. I, I, I think that they are the favorite. But it, it, I don't think... I don't think uh, like Drury is going to play into Adams. I, 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 just, I don't know if it's this offseason... I, I can't see how Buffalo brings him back. I can't. I just I think it's too much of a distraction. I think he's an injury risk. 
Um, he's going to miss the start of the season, and I think they want that pick in this year's draft. What I would do if I'm the Rangers, and if I think what should get him, and I think it's a fair deal, is I've seen people mention the Rick Nash trade. I'm going to refer to Stat Boy Steven, who I'm going to talk to you about having a collab with because he told me he was interested in doing so. He has his own with uh, Wardy. I don't with know Wardy, yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good, and I, I would definitely like to get Steven on, maybe even Tyler with him in some sort of way. But um, uh, he mentioned the Rick Nash trade as a comparable and talked about how you know you could get two roster players, a, a top prospect, which was Tim Erickson at the time, and a first-round pick. What I say is you, you look at one of Pavel Butchnevich, Orion Strom, and then Filipino, and then I would say one of either Lundquist, Kravtsov, Zachary Jones, or uh, Matthew Robertson. And then two first round picks, the second one being conditional. And you know what? I, I think it's fair at that point. I think I, I think Buffalo gets their return for Eichel. The Rangers keep their untouchables. I don't think you're going to get many better offers than that because I don't see Trevor Zegers or Jamie Drysdale being available no matter what anybody says. Um, I think Marco Rossi's heart condition is a big red flag for any team that looks to acquire him. And that really hurts Minnesota. And I know Matthew Boldy's a good prospect, but he's not nearly as good of a prospect as Marco Rossi. And if Marco Rossi is damaged goods, that's that, that hurts Minnesota. That really does. Um, they're not going to deal Joel Erickson Eck after signing into that contract. And being fourth on the Selkie voting. Yeah, they're not they're not gonna deal him. He he's gonna be off limits. Um LA supposedly seems like they're out of it because like I said, I think that they refuse to budge off of Quentin Byfield. And obviously Quentin Byfield is not near Alexi Lafreniere's value right now. He's a very valuable piece, but I don't blame LA for not wanting to deal him. He's probably their future number one center. So if Adams wants to be realistic and he wants to start talking, I think that would be a deal that could help him. And I don't think that there would be a lot of teams that could, if any, that could top that type of deal. Anthony, what are your percentage on Eichel being a Ranger? Next season. Unless you froze suddenly. Yeah, frozen. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with 35%. I think the Rangers had the best chance out of all the teams that are there, but I think it's just, I think it's, I don't think he's going to, I just don't, I think he has to go back to Buffalo. I know it's funny to say, but I think he has to go back. You got to build that trade value. Uh, from Sean, Mark and Phil, if you could get one player in uh, the free agency class for the Rangers, who would it be? Anthony, same for you. And since you're back, we have to go with you first. Who was the UFA? you would want on the Islanders right now? Um, I mean, I, I got to I mean, I'm, I'm going to stick with one of the guys that they already had on their team. Um, I guess the, the UFA group really isn't that great. So for me, I just keep Kyle Palmieri. Kyle Palmieri adds a scoring punch to the team. Um, and not only that, he was in the playoffs. He played a heavy game. He was great. He threw hits. Um, you know, in the Tampa series, he didn't score, but he, he, he hit some posts. Vasilevsky robbed him a couple of times. I, I thought overall he was great. I think he's a guy during an 82-game season. You can pencil him in for, you know, 25 goals. He's done it pretty consistently in the last few years. So, um, for me, Palmieri, for sure, keeping him would be big. And I thought he fit in well with J.G. Pajot on that line. He did. Uh, he did. Phil, who would yours be for the Rangers? I gotta say one of Sean Corrali or Casey Sasekis. Um, it depends on what the asking prices are in terms of the AAB. I might lean towards Corral this one because I think his AAB will be a little lower and I think they'll be able to fit more. I think Corrali will be, be uh, between like a two, two and a half AAB. Sasekis will probably be closer to a three, maybe a three and a half. Um, I would say I would lean towards Corrali. Uh, it's got to be one of those two centers, though. They need they need the center depth there, um, and I would play Morgan Barron probably as the number four center 
and let him kind of marinate and make sure that the fourth line gets a decent amount of minutes. So, um, no, we have not spoken about the Mika Zibanejad contract we yet. We did talk about it last week a little bit, but Mark, Mark yeah, Mark, Mark answer, and then we can definitely speak about that afterwards. Okay, uh, which by the way, hi again, Ariana. But uh, the, uh, I would say if if you press me, and I've I've been spoke I've been outspoken about this, promote from within right now, um, but. I would have to check in to see if Alexiak is a left defenseman. I would possibly look into him. But um, the other situation, I would probably say Sean Corrali would be the other one. I don't have the faith in Sezikis. We've been over this before. Um, I think he's he's sort of the sum of that part. And, uh, Anthony, you would probably like this uh, metaphor if I said uh, it would be like taking a lion away from Voltron. So that's what I feel like Casey Sezikis off that line is. Alexa, so, uh, of course, I just made case. I just made the identity line Voltron, so I'm not happy about that. Um, but uh, that's what I would say with that. Uh, Phil, you said this. Go right ahead. Mika Zibanejad's next contract. Um, to answer the question about Alexiak first. He is left defense. He is left. Okay, side. good. Then I'll take Alexiak. Yeah, Ale- I-, I just think his cap hit's going to be too much. And he- yeah, uh, that's what I'm worried about too. Yeah. If he has for over five, no. I think anything over four might be too much just because of the fact that they, I don't think they can afford to add a defense. Line. Um, as for me, because of Benajad's contract, I just don't know how he gets the nine million, the 10 million that he was looking at before. Uh, yeah. And yeah, actually, I, I would be okay with going eight years for him. Uh, I, he's, what, 27 right now? Going to be 28, I think. Um, I would be okay with giving him years and like, let's just say he says eight years, 56 million or 58, 59 million, somewhere in that range. I would be more than okay with that. I don't think he will, but I I see somewhere between eight and eight and a half for him just because I I can't see him getting nine after the start he had season. And the fact that he's really only had two seasons with that type of production. Um, I also think that I would be very wary with him because his production has been at a pretty high level that's borderline unsustainable at this point. I mean, in 2020, his shooting percentage was 19.7%. That's not sustainable. And I've referenced Alexander Ovechkin and how his career high was 15.4. So I, I, I don't see that happening. Um, I would just be very wary if he wants to stay here and he wants to take a little bit of a hometown discount, you keep him and you give him that extra year and you worry about it. I know I've said term can be killer in the past, but that deal would take him to 36. And that's when he would really start declining hard is after that 30 age 36 year. And then you can go from there. Uh, Would you say eight years, nine million? No, eight, eight years and about seven to seven and a half. If I can get him for that, I, 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 I signed that's that. a steal. That that's that I signed that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I would. because if you could get him at that and then get Adam Fox at eight for eight years, then you you've set yourself up pretty well. But um I do not believe that Pavel Bochinevich is overrated. If you want to talk about Pavel Butch having a great year in a contract year, fine. But overrated? Definitely not. Pavel Butchnevich turned a corner that we all thought he could have been turned for years. Now David Quinn finally gave it, you know, let off the, the reins a little bit with him. So. And the other thing, the other thing just to go with that is, uh, I think Booch is, Booch is a good player. It's just now contract situations and navigating the cap in the future. I mean, if if you if they t- if they bring back Booch, you got to get rid of Vitaly Pratsov or or Kapokako. Because you can't have these guys languish on the... No. You can't put Kratz off on the fourth line. And by the way, it's funny because I'm doing our... I was, I'm editing our year-end segment. And I already had a, a moment where I looked at Philk when it was just the two of us and said, we know Kratz off's coming. What are they going to do? Play him with, play with Brett Howden and play him seven minutes a game? And what did they end up doing? Played him with Brett Howden and played him ten minutes a game? Great. Awesome. Good thing you're doing that with your top prospects. And yes... That's why, Chris, I'm with you on that. Booch is going to be looking for a lot more money 
and he deserves a raise. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with anybody who says we'll we'll change. The time would be now. He's a restricted free agent. He's got team control left. And he had a great year. His value is probably his highest right now. And but, a replacement in the wings. Yeah, and you have wait. Yeah, you have wings that are ready to take that next step. Not only that, but if you really wanted to move Chris Kreider to the right side, I mean, you could try it. You could absolutely try it. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, but overrated? No, I don't think he's overrated. I think, I think he's rated exactly where he is now. That's what I, it is rated by some i think if you talk to other fans around the league they just they saw a lot of people just don't understand exactly how good he really is and mm -hmm. i'm a real good penalty killer he was on the, one of the top penalty kill he was the top pairing on the top one of the top penalty killing units in the entire league for a majority of the league for for a majority of the season they were a top three to five penalty kill in the league and he was one of their top guys so yeah and that's not because Mika's a bad job. I tell you that right now. And by the way, going going back to um, uh, what uh, Mike was bringing up before, I believe uh, with this, when you look at this, is why you need like a Morgan Barron or somebody that's going to step up. And uh, the reason why is because they're going to step up and go, "I'll penalty kill. Don't worry about it." It's nice to have. And and all right, why do you say that about Mika's a job not being a key penalty killer? No, I'm not. I'm not trying to say that he wasn't a key penalty killer. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm oh, to, you just, it wasn't just him. It wasn't just him. That okay. that that pairing got better when Butch Nabich got put onto it during this season, and Butch Nabich started out kind of yeah, but he got better, and I you could just watch him turn the corner, and he just started making plays on a penalty kill. Where you're like, wow. Like, this guy's defensive hockey sense is a lot better than I ever thought it was. And he got better and better and better. And yet, yeah, and Booch was the most consistent forward on a game-in, game-out basis at both ends of the rink. And there's just no argument to it. Panarin, great offensively. Decent defender. Nothing great. Above average. But Pavel Butch Navich was the most complete player on the team every night. So. And again, something... I always try to mention with this, and I did this all the way back to when I did my bold predictions video of when I was alone doing this uh, at the beginning of the year, and that's, um, and that's the short answer is I can still like a player and not and look at him and go his future is not with this team because it's just you can't you can't keep everybody anymore. If this was pre two thousand and five, no problem. Sign Booch. $5 million, put them on the third line. And you got a budget, and it's a flat cap error. It's it's questions you have to answer. The way you do that is to get the most you can out of players out of um, on bridge deals and on entry-level contracts. That's the way you do it, because you're going to pay your stars. It's just it's just the way, the way economics works. So, um, it's, again, I like Pavel Buchnevich. I was beating the drum for Pavel Buchnevich. I was happy they didn't they traded Anthony Duclair and not him. And not because I didn't like Anthony Duclair either. I was loving the Duke what I saw from him. But again, sometimes decisions have to be made when you have to upgrade your team. By the way, MJ, no problem. That's why I liked that question. And you guys keep asking questions. We'll keep answering them. Yeah. Um this is what we love doing. We love. This is what we love doing, and all three of us. Unfortunately, Anthony's having some connection problems. Uh, if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.